hi guys welcome back to the channel it's the cooking nurse and in today's video i have uh, i'm making a requested video of offos katogo this is like one of the most common breakfast meals in uganda so if you'd love to know how i make mine stay tuned So offals are more like cow intestines, they are also called tripe, they are also called matumbo in Swahili, they are called evienda in Runyankore or vienda. So I have them in my pan and I'm just going to put there some garlic, I have some bay leaves, uh, they are very well washed and I'll put them on fire to cook for about one hour. And in the meantime, I have my ingredients, matoke, onion, tomatoes, tomato paste, uh, some vegetables, as you please, yeah. And then I have some leafy vegetables. This is called nakati, where I come from. It's called nakati. I don't know how it's called in English, but yeah. And if you can tell, the water has reduced all the way down. That means our offals are actually well cooked and ready and actually really fragrant. Yeah. So we are going to remove this from the water and separate them so that we are able to actually work on reducing all this much fat that is on the offals. No one wants to be biting into a fatty boiled offal, okay? But if you'd love yours like that, then you're good to go. Remember, you've seasoned it with salt and yeah, this is uh, a very important broth or water. Don't throw it away. So now we are going to go on with our pan where we are going to be using and remember the other ones are already like boiled so the fats are still intact and they may burn if we don't put some oil on the pot. So I'm going to put there some little olive oil and then put my offals in there until they are coated and golden brown and most of the fat has really reduced off the actual meat. Yeah, and actually, if you want to make like sauce, hmm, if you want to make like offal sauce, I think before you put in or before the next stage, you can just serve it like that. So you can see there's some uh, a small fat that is down there. It's going to keep the flavor in and we are going to first go in with some garlic, chopped garlic, because it's more fragrant when it goes in first alone. And then after that, I'm going to go in with my chopped onions. So seriously, everything I do here is because that is what is available to me at the moment. And like I told you before, I've been making my own meals at home. So I was making lunch for the kids and I'm using what is available. And I'm just showing you because uh, one of you requested for this video, I'm just showing you how I do it at home so that you can pick ideas. It's not how it's done, but it's how I do it. And I did not forget anything. I just used what I have. So after the onions have become translucent and flavorful, aromatic, I'm just going in with my tomatoes and tomato paste for the color. Yeah, the color. And then it also helps on thickening the sauce or the soup of the food. So I'm going to keep on putting in some of the other broth and i just keep on making sure my pot is not getting burnt before these tomatoes are well mixed with the meat so as you can see they have started to loosen up and yeah we almost have like a whole or four stew so i'm gonna season this with some uh, half a tablespoon of paprika and then i have this beef curry that is store-bought just for more flavors and i i most times actually i don't understand when people say i don't do you know spices some of these spices are really good for your health so maybe before you despise them you may need to first check them out and how helpful they are to your body so like right now i'm adding in some black pepper and yeah we all know we need some black pepper at some point so it's never too much spices 
unless they are really useless. So I'm going in with my soup from the offals, the one the water that I used to boil the offals, because it can be stubborn and really hard. So it's usually good if you pre-boil them before actually reaching this stage. So I'm going to go in with my matoke. I want them whole because I love when I serve them and they are like long. Another alternative is you cook the matoke aside with some salt and then later on that soup that we made or the stage that we reached at before adding the matoke you combine the two the only difference the problem is the matoke will break most times or it will just not be well incorporated someone can tell that this food was not cooked in the same pot but either way you're gonna get some results so we cover this and then come back later on make sure to boil it to cook it on medium heat and then there you are you have some nice thick or for soup that is not so transparent and you know the typical one we buy in those bufundas in the city or the suburbs because i told you this is like one of the most common breakfasts in my country so people usually have options but main the options they have to choose from is either g-nuts beans or offals so yeah i have put in my vegetables because you already know we don't do overcooked vegetables and a lot of people have asked me on my Instagram how I cook my vegetables to have them stay still and also keep their color, the green color. What I do usually when I have like food cooking like this, I just put it on top. And then after a while, the only problem with this one is I moved away and then came back when it was already like, yeah, overcooked. It may not be overcooked, but for me, it's overcooked because I usually want to steam it for like three to five minutes just enough to have the juices of the soup in my vegetables and then i'm good to serve so yeah and then also another thing is uh people ask me how do people cut this avocado to be perfect and nice like this i'm also showing you that in this video so you have your avocado peeled and then have it on the board and then chop small small sizes and then use the top of your knife to just lay it down and voila you have a nice um looking plate of fresh made of katogo or akatogo kebienda and there you are so i will see you soon in my next video i hope bye also please subscribe if you haven't thank you